couple of announcements. Uh, one is next Friday. Next Friday is the is the lecture before spring break, right? Is that right? You're you're probably more tuned into that than I am. And by Cornell rules, I have to lecture. I cannot cancel a lecture just because you're not going to be here. <laughs> On the other hand, I can guarantee that there will not be a quiz next Friday. And furthermore, nothing useful for the course is going to be said in that <laughs> lecture. So, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'll be here, I'm going to lecture, and I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. My, 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 default, my default will be something like, uh, is the brain a computer, yes or no? How many people think the brain's a computer? It is a computer. Do you think it's a Turing machine? It can be. Yes, you can, but is it a, so, so there's lots of interesting questions like this, and I'd like to talk about that, if, if, but also talk about anything else you want to talk about, as long as it's not related to the course. Yes? You, can, you cannot ask questions about final projects. Nothing to, to related to the course. <laughs> because, because I predict that the number of people that are going to be here next Friday is going to be on the order of 12 to 24. Yes? And it's only those that have a lab on Friday. Well, yeah, the people that have lab on Friday, unless they've checked out early and, and are, or are going to come on Thursday instead and have arranged it with you. So, who thinks they're going to be here next Friday? Lecture. Okay, so that's, yeah, something like 20. That was kind of a, one of these things, right? <laughs> if you wake up. So, <clears throat> so you know, we could talk philosophy, we could talk neurobiology, we can talk, we can talk uh, uh, visual biophysics, what you see, what your limits of vision are. Uh, you know, we could talk about history of computing, the weirdest computer I've ever worked on or you've ever worked on. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Well, I say the default will be uh, my opinion about computers and brains. Yeah. Would that be the same time the dragon's going to be outside? I don't know. Who cares? It's gotten really boring since you can't do anything. So we're so politically correct, we can't burn the dragon. No, you, that's environmental concern. You can't. You can't throw snowballs at the. Uh, architects, you know. <laughs> Not that you could this year anyway. If you go, if you look at the, uh, there's an old uh, two minute segment from uh, Video Note from 2009 that uh, has, uh, that's on the YouTube channel, uh, EC476 YouTube channel, that has about 30 green painted architects running by me in here and in which I attempted to scream at them as loud as they were yelling at me. Didn't work so well, but it was kind of fun. <laughs> so, Friday, there will be a lecture. I say nothing useful about the course will be given in it, but, but it, will be, it might be interesting. It's possible. Second is, if any of you are pleased with the way your synthesizer is working, and you would like to have your the uh, 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 30 seconds or two minutes of sound immortalized, then uh, send me an audio file in some reasonable format and uh, I will uh, put it on the class website. <clears throat> no limit, uh, time limit on that one if you, when you get around to it, but, but uh, be happy to put up. The second is, the third thing is that uh, I, I sent a link today talking a little bit more about floating point and floating point performance because a lot of people are using floating point in this lab even though 
I tried to minimize it in my code. And uh, one thing that uh, was immediately obvious is that if you define four 8 by 8 floating point matrices, you run out of memory. And or it, takes, it actually takes around 1,000 bytes of memory. That's a quarter of all your RAM. Uh, so I wanted to, so I sent a link talking about floating point formats. Uh, one of the things in that link is that uh, the default GCC floating point library is a generic library and it's really slow. But if you link up, uh, was it libm.a, then the performance is much better and, this, and the floating point is more stable. The directions for doing that are on the floating point link I sent to you. Any questions about lab three? Shouldn't be many. We're on the last day of it. But uh, so any questions about now lab four? Motor controller, infrared tachometer, motor controller. We still have yet to talk about any examples for tiny real time, which you are you are forced to use. And we haven't talked about PID control yet for, of motors, and we will. <clears throat> any questions at this point? You need to read that page. You need to read all of the tiny real time page. There's lots of details there. But I thought what I'd do first here is to do an example of two tasks, two tasks, two flows of control, two independent flows of control now. And task one is going to read port B, is going to read port B and set, and uh, then if you push a button that's attached to uh, port B, it's going to light up some LEDs. It's going to light up LEDs corresponding to the buttons. And it's going to pass to the UART the button number that was pressed. And this is the button on the, on the SDK 500. And the second task is going to take a command from the user at the terminal at the UART which is either going to clear, set, or toggle any one LED. So it's going to clear, set, or toggle an LED. So we can turn on an LED here, we can turn it off here by clearing it. So these two, these two tasks are going to have to share a variable which controls the LEDs. So there's going to be a shared chunk of memory, so we have to protect that with semaphores. We're going to be using the UART to enter commands. We're going to be controlling some very simple process on the, on the microcontroller side. And so it is a extremely stripped down version of what you're going to have to do on Lab 4. <coughs> So you need to include a bunch of stuff, TRT settings, dot H, and you have to edit that. You can't just include it. You have to edit it. You have to understand every line of it. Then you're going to have to include TRT kernel 644.c, and 644 is here because it's specific to the Mega 644. The swapper, the task swapper, 
uh, has to know a lot about the number of registers and the way they're laid out. We're also going to include standard I.O. so that we can have printf and scanf and those high-level functions, but we're going to actually replace the low-level functions, put car and get car, with our own functions. But we still need standard I.O. And we're going to include AVR sleep dot H because the background task, the the uh, task which executes when no other task is ready will just sleep the CPU to save power. We're going to have to define the usual file UART string that you've been using all semester, so I'm not going to write the rest of that mess out. And we're going to have to define some semaphores some semaphores for the UART. We're going to have to define semaphore for RX for receive ISR signal. That's going to be semaphore one. Semaphore enumeration is one based, not zero based. The first semaphore you can define is semaphore one, not semaphore zero. And we're going to define sem string done. As two, we're going to include TRT UART dot H and TRT UART dot C. And we're going to define a semaphore for shared for the shared memory, which will control the LEDs, as sem share S H or Schwab or share as semaphore three. And we have to have a couple of globals, but not many. Args is a optional argument that you can pass to pass to a task when it is created. You could do that. You could do either or, but not both. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Arg. <laughs> That's the never mind. So uh, it's a it's a an optional parameter, which is passed into the task at creation time, when it is created. And we need a u int 8t uh, LED. Okay, so that's all of the, the header stuff. So let's just write out the two tasks. And so the 
The first one is going to be a task called button communication, button com. And button inside this function, this task, process, whatever you want to call it, we're going to define some we're going to just define some uh, variables which will now live on the stack of this task. So these are stacked variables, release and deadline. A uint 8 for the switch, switch number, and switch state, which is part of a, I think, a debounce state machine. And then, unlike the usual function you write in a in a single threaded program we're gonna do a while one here this function never exits it must not exit we're gonna read the we're gonna read the We're going to read the switches off of pin B. And now we're going to update the LED variable. What's the matter? Yes? Oh, I see. You're, you're uh, look at Facebook, I get. All right. Now we're going to update the uh, LED variable, but this is going to be shared between the two processes. And so we have to protect it. So we're going to have to do a TRT weight on the shared sem uh, semaphore <clears throat> if the other process has not locked this chunk of memory then TRT weight will fall through and execute if the other process has locked the chunk of memory then TRT wait will stop until the other process unlocks it. LED equals LED ORD with switch. Port C equals not LED. And then we do a TRT signal on SEM shared. <clears throat> so that's handling the communication synchronization between between the between the two tasks. The other one of course we haven't written yet. Yes. Yeah. Kernel handles it all. So this waits if sem if semaphore three has the value zero, and it falls through if semaphore. 3 has the value 1, it falls through and it decrements the semaphore. It doesn't wait. Fall through means it just keeps going. <clears throat> if it's 0, it waits. It halts this process and does a context switch to some other process. It halts this process if the value, if semaphore is, is, has value zero, then this process 
hangs at the TRT weight, some other process can execute. If this falls, if, 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 if before this executes, the value of semaphore 3 is a 1, then TRT weight does two things. It sets the value to 0 and then keeps going. And so there is no context switch. There is no swap to, it does not swap out this process. It does not go to a new process. It keeps this process executing. Can't have it, right? It it, signal, the TRT, signal TRT signal adds one to the semaphore. Depends on the semaphore. These are not counting semaphores; they're binary semaphores. Shared, yeah, yeah. Same symbol. So you have the sum of the coin of P, then you have another sum of the coin of P. So when someone does a V, is it guaranteed order that it gets Wait, 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 wait. Say again? If the sum of the cost of P and another sum of the cost of P as well, when the sum of the got released, is there an order when the sum of was released? What do you mean calling P? So if you had two tasks, both competing for this semaphore? Is it guaranteed No, nor is guaranteed. It's whoever gets there first. That's why you need the synchronization. It's whoever gets there first. <clears throat> semaphore th number three. It's the ordinal number of the semaphore. That's not its value. Its value is one or zero. So now we have to do a little uh, cheesy state machine to debounce the buttons. And I wanted to send back the ordinal number of the button which was pressed, not the pattern of bits. So we have to convert from a binary number to a bit that was pressed. So we need to do something like while switch is greater than 1, switch equals switch shifted by one to the right and switch number equals switch num plus plus. So what this is going to do then is if button seven is pushed it's going to return the number seven as switch num. Not, not the value 0x80. Zero zero. <clears throat> and we have to set switch state equal to 1 and Yeah. It is a part of the state machine for the debounce. So what we're going to do here then is say if switch state and switch equals zero, equal equals zero. 
then switch state equals zero, equals zero. So this is the other part of the debounce state machine. Then, since we are, since we only need to check for the slow human every once in a while, we're going to set the release time equal to TRT current time. So that is a, a built-in function in the kernel which returns the current kernel time. TRT current time plus SEC seconds, OND, I wish I could spell, special seconds to ticks. Oh, no, I did it MATLAB style. Seconds to ticks. 0 0.04. And deadline, the new deadline is going to be in the future now, TRT current time plus seconds to ticks 0 0.05. That says that I have to wait at least 40 milliseconds before I allow this process to execute again, but it has to be done before 50 milliseconds. Then we do a TRT sleep until release and deadline and then end. <clears throat> and everything we're doing in here is rather fast so 10 milliseconds is clearly enough time to, to execute this once. Yes? Well, it doesn't matter where you do it. But then isn't it signaling that, um, you know, we could interrupt this task in the middle of it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You better not do long tasks. You better not do long operations in a, in a locked block. So you do the minimum amount. Exactly, yes. There is a macro, yes, that is written that knows to do the, how to do the conversion based on how you set the CPU frequency, the clock prescaler in TRT settings. That's why you have to edit it. When I wrote this, I wrote it on a 20 megahertz system. You're not using a 20 megahertz system. You have to edit TRT settings. You have to. No. It's automatically calculated for you. It does the divide. Does that mean like TRT current time also returns the current time in the units of ticks? Yes. Okay. Returns the time in units of ticks, exactly. CPU ticks. The tick? Uh, it's, it depends on how you set it up, but it's around 10 milliseconds. Anything else? Okay, let's do the other task, the other process. <clears throat> So this is going to read the buttons, if any, wait for 40, a minimum of 40 milliseconds, then do it again.
So the other task then, void, wow, slovenly erased job. So we're going to do, a, we're going to call this serial com. We're going to define a uint 16T uh, LED number and a car uh, command string with a maximum of four digits. Again, local variables. These exist on the stack of this task. <coughs> I didn't pass any value. It is an optional value you can pass in. If you had some initialization parameter you want to pass in. Yes, how you could do it, yeah. I didn't use it. We're going we're gonna to initialize the LEDs to off. And I didn't protect this particular uh, example of LED because it's only done once in the initialization section. Now we're going to do a while one. And uh, do a f print f to standard standard out and all we're going to do here is print a command prompt so that it looks like the system is asking you for something Then do an F scan F to standard in. And because we're using trtuart.c, standard in and standard out have been rerouted to the functions I wrote, which are interrupt driven. Um, <coughs> can I have standard out as the default uh, file option? Yeah, it does. Okay, without work Yes. Okay, I was just wondering. I think it will, yeah. And we're going to output here that we're going to ask for two characters. A percent string and then a percent D. So we're actually going to we're input a string and a and a and an integer. And then we're going to put those into variables command CMD and ampersand LED number. So why is an ampersand why is there an ampersand here and not one here? In fact, why is there an ampersand there at all? That's exactly right. Or let me step back a little bit and, re and repeat that. C is, pa is a pass by value language. Pass by value means that when you call a function, what's put passed into the function is not the address of a variable, but the value of a variable. So to get the, to get the address of a var variable so you can modify it, you have to use the ampersand which tells C find the pointer to LED num, find the the address of LED num and pass that in instead. Why is it used there? 
because it's already a pointer. Because when you just use the name of a string, it is already a pointer. How confusing. That's the way C is. Sorry. <coughs> Now we can if command index 0 is equal to s and and you you understand that this parser is not very flexible right uh if you put a space in first it doesn't recognize the command if if command 0 equals s then, uh oh, wait a minute. We need to uh, protect this section with a sem share. <clears throat> and then say if command zero equals quote s, then LED equals is ORed with because we're setting S means set of an LED on so we're going to OR the current state of the LED with one shifted to the left by LED num if CMD zero equals clear, then LE LED is anded with not one shifted by LED num and if command 0 is equal to T for toggle then LED is XORed with 1 shifted by LED num port C is equal to not LED and now we do a TRT signal to a SEM shared. And end, end while and end main. That left. This one? Or equal. So based on how you manipulate this LED, does that mean when we input the LED number, that's not actually 0, 1, 2, 3. That should be actually like, kind of like 1, 2, 4, 8. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In that sense, if you input, for example, a three it, for the LED name. Right, then it ORs with an eight. Two to the third. It does a shift it it, it shifts one by three places, right? In uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. into the third bit. I was wondering if somebody was going to ask that. Thank you. Why is there no release and deadline for this task? If there's no user input, it should just exactly, it should hang right here and just wait for the user. In other words, the user is so slow 
that there's no reason to have some artificial deadline in here because the user is going to be the rate determining step at almost all times. So this is the weight function. <coughs> Remember, since standard in has been modified to be non-blocking, it's an interrupt driven I.O. system. Since standard in has been modified to be non-blocking, F scan F is non-blocking. And inside the 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 git car, there's there's going to be a semaphore. In fact, the semaphore that you define, semaphore one, which only becomes set when the user presses C or T or S. You better use it, yes. In fact, it, the documentation all says that. That's another good reason to read the page. <clears throat> and of course, the comments in the code also say that, but I'm not writing out the comments. Oh, don't do that. This is a really stupid parser. Yeah, I mean, it better be C and at least one space and then an integer. Okay, because you like define. Okay, so so it's space. Okay. String strings are. It turns out that string inputs are space delimited by default. Uh -huh. In C. Yes. Oh, I didn't protect for any buffer overflow. This is this is this is not a production example. <clears throat> no, you you'd clearly you'd wanna you, you certainly would want to do that in a real in a real system. And in a real system there is F scan F N, which only inputs a maximum number of characters. So we have two tasks. They're sharing one variable, LED. LED is protected between the two tasks. When one task is reading or writing it, the other one can't touch it because of the se weight semaphores. <coughs> a context a context switch between tasks can happen in F scan F because there's a there's an implicit semaphore wait in the interrupt service routine for the receive. It can happen at the TRT wait or the TRT signal. And it can happen in the other task during the uh, sleep command. The ne next task which is dispatched on a context switch the next task which is dispatched, which will execute, is the one that has the nearest deadline. And also, like at the beginning, you define three semitones, but we are actually explicitly using a like, semitone share, and the other two actually used by the ISR. Yes, they're used, they're used by the UART ISR. I mean, we still have to define You them. absolutely have to define them. And I left them exposed. The, 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 the quandary is always, do you hide those away and say, start with semaphore 3? Or do you just expose them and so students can say, ah, that's why we're starting with semaphore 3. And besides, if I don't use serial, I don't need them at all. Because lots of applications don't use the UART at all. So I decided to leave them exposed. There's lots of setup required. Yeah, that, so let, let's say if you if you had a if you had uh, several copies of the UART, say, and you wanted to lock one copy of the UART for one task, then a counting semaphore would make sense. 
uh, or if you had several copies of memory or something like that. But in this case, we only have one copy of memory. I think I wrote it as a binary. A Very good. So is it, isn't a binary semaphore a mutex? There is one further restraint on a mutex. A, a mutex is a binary semaphore which... Anybody want to fill out the last step half of the sentence? Can only be cleared by the task that set it. So it's a exclusive lock. <clears throat> it's not just a lock, and it's an exclusive lock. I got it, and nobody else can mess with it, no matter what. If a, if, a, if, if, a, if a task that did not lock the mutex tries to release it, it won't do anything. Now, there's a couple of, we're going to talk more about the API on this, and we also have to, we're still write main, where everything is, where all of these tasks are identified to the operating system, to the kernel. But um, <clears throat> there's a few things you better not put into an interrupt service routine ever. One is TRT wait. Don't ever wait on a, don't ever wait in a interrupt service routine because that does kill the system. Because interrupts are turned off in an interrupt service routine, the multitasking is totally trashed. Unless you really want to get clever and turn on interrupts yourself in an interrupt service routine. Don't do that. We'll go into the API and talk about main and the setup of all of this stuff in the next uh, in the on Monday. But are there any questions? Yes. Yes. Mutex, yes. Yes, and now what you're asking me to do is to come up with a counterexample of why, and I can't do it on the fly. I'll th let me think about that one. So let's say you did a, you, you, let's say you did a signal without doing a wait. Somebody, somebody else did the wait and you did a signal, you'd unlock it. That's the counterexample. <coughs> If you had stupid code or a malicious user, let me put it this way. Now, in the case of a small multitasking system like this, the only malicious user is you, right? <laughs> and so, you, so there's not that much difference between a mutex and a semaphore. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a strong, it's not a strong. Uh, not a big problem. Read up on this stuff. This is a complicated, the infrastructure here is what's going to kill you. The code, the logic for the, for the algorithms that, are use, that you're going to be using, the logic for the PID is all pretty straightforward. It's the infrastructure of the kernel which is going to take all the time. Therefore, you need to front load that and start reading. A couple of times last year I said, I heard people say, I could have done this in one, in one lab period if it hadn't been for this blank, blank operating system. But, and that may be true, but in the industry with larger programs that are maintained by lots of people, everybody uses a real-time kernel. 